The video that you just saw represented a simple LED flasher circuit that required only a single NPN transistor, a resistor, one capacitor, a battery, and an LED. So let's talk about the circuit. So the battery is connected to a resistor, which is connected to a capacitor. And across the capacitor, I have an NPN transistor connected in reverse. That is, the emitter is not connected to ground. This time, the collector is connected to the ground. The base of the NPN transistor is not being used. And the collector is attached to an LED. And the LED goes to ground. So this is the circuit that I'm using in the demonstration that you saw. Now, the way this circuit works is due to a phenomenon known as negative resistance. Now, you might be wondering, what is negative resistance? Well, let's talk about positive resistance. Based on Ohm's law, as you increase the voltage, the current increases. So when dealing with positive resistance, there's a direct relationship between voltage and current. When you decrease the voltage, the current decreases. Now, when dealing with negative resistance, the reverse is true. There's an inverse relationship between voltage and current. As the voltage goes up, the current goes down. Or, as the voltage goes down, the current goes up. Now, with the NPN transistor connected in this way, this is what happens eventually once you reach a breakdown voltage. The voltage will decrease as the current increases. So that's this circuit works when operating in the negative resistance region. Now, for those of you who want more information on this, there's a video I created entitled Negative Resistance Using the 2N222 NPN Transistor. If you type that into the YouTube search bar and then type in Organic Chemistry Tutor as well, that video should come up where I've actually done an experiment showing the negative resistance of the NPN transistor when connected in that fashion. Now, let's talk about the components that I use in this circuit. So for the resistance R, I chose a one kilo ohm resistor. For the capacitor, I use a 16 volt, 1000 microfarad capacitor. And for the transistor, I use an NPN 2N22222A transistor. And just connecting it like this, the circuit will work. The voltage of the battery that I've used is a 12 volt battery. I have eight AA batteries connected in series. Now the voltage of this circuit has to be relatively high because if the voltage is too low, it's not gonna work. So I recommend using a 12 volt battery or higher. The breakdown voltage of the emitter collector region when connecting in that direction, that is when current flows from the emitter to the collector, this is conventional current, not electron flow. Electron flow is actually in the opposite direction. But once you connect the transistor like this, the breakdown voltage is approximately 7.3 volts. So until the voltage across the emitter and the collector region, that is until VEC reaches 7.3 volts, this transistor will not conduct. It will remain in the off state. But once you reach this breakdown voltage, it will begin to conduct. And as you adjust the voltage at this point, the current can increase. Now, for those of you who want to understand how that works, just check out my other video on negative resistance. And uh, I explain how the current increases when the voltage decreases beyond this point. The voltage initially goes up to 7.3, and then it drops to 6.98. As it drops from 7.3 to 6.98, that's when the current flowing through the emitter and the collector of the transistor goes up. And that's when we're operating in negative, in the negative resistance region. Now let's talk about how this circuit works. If you were to remove the LED from the circuit, you'll get a waveform that can be either a sawtooth wave 
Or sometimes if you adjust R, if you increase it, you could decrease the frequency and get a wave that looks like this. During the first part of the wave, the voltage is increasing. So keep in mind, this will be the output across the NPN transistor if the LED is removed. Now, the voltage of the capacitor is increasing because it's being charged by the 12 volt battery. Now, once the voltage of the capacitor reaches the breakdown voltage of the transistor, it will discharge. The transistor will conduct, the capacitor will discharge through that transistor, and also the battery will also discharge through that transistor as well. Now, when connecting the LED along with the transistor, the capacitor needs to charge up to 9.3 volts in order to turn this device on. So as you can see, the capacitor is constantly charging and discharging. Once it reaches the breakdown voltage, it will discharge through the transistor. So with a voltage drop of 2 volts and a voltage drop of 7.3 for the MPN transistor, it needs a, a voltage of 9.3 volts to light up the LED. So that's why the voltage of the battery needs to be significantly high. If you use a 9 volt battery or less for this circuit, it's not going to be enough to get it started. So you want to use the 12 volt battery if you want to make this LED flasher circuit uh, work. Now the next thing we need to talk about is the frequency or the flash rate. The values of R and C controls the frequency, the rate at which the LED will flash on and off. If you want to increase the flash rate, there's two ways you can do that. You can do that by decreasing R and the frequency will go up. Or you could decrease the capacitance and you could increase the frequency and thus the flash rate of the LED. If you wish to decrease the flash rate, if you want it to flash on and off at a slower pace, you can increase the resistance or you can choose a capacitor with a higher capacitance. Now sometimes you may want to fine tune the rate at which it flashes. And so if you want to do that, I recommend introducing a potentiometer to get the job done. So in my next demonstration, I've added a 10K potentiometer to this part of the circuit. And as we increase R, the frequency will decrease. And if you decrease R, the frequency will increase. So by adjusting this potentiometer, we can adjust the rate at which the LED flashes. So feel free to take a look at that at the next demonstration. So as you saw in the last demonstration, we can control the flash rate of the LED by adjusting the potentiometer. Now there's some other things that we can do with this circuit just to make it a little bit more interesting. For one thing, if we want more LEDs, we can add them in parallel to the original LED, that is the green LED. So we can put in a blue LED. We can also put in a white LED. There's some other ones that you can add, like a red LED or a yellow LED. So here's going to be the final demonstration of these LEDs in parallel with each other. And that'll be it for this video. So thanks for watching.